I just learned this crazy keyframe hack here in DaVinci Resolve, and I had no idea you could do this until I just learned it, and I want to share it with you guys. Let's jump in Resolve. You got to check this out. Come on. In DaVinci Resolve here, I'm in the Edit tab. Now, this audio tip slash hack, I had no idea you could do this, but let's say, for example, we're going to start with some audio as the audio guy here. I want to keyframe or add some keyframes to my audio here. Now, if you've seen some of my stuff about automation, that's a more advanced way of doing keyframing. But for example, if we open our inspector right here, we start at the beginning of our clip and I come to my audio tab here and I just go ahead and click a keyframe and then I play through my video clip and I adjust the volume while it's playing. Look what is happening to the keyframes. It is essentially setting automation for keyframes. That's ridiculous. I first saw this with the audio here in the edit tab and I was like, what? That's insane. You could just ride that volume slider and it'll automatically add in all the keyframes. Crazy. It also works with the pan right here. And then that got me thinking, well, hey, if it works with audio, does it work with video? Yeah, it does. Check this out. So taking a look at the video portion of our clips here, I'm just going to come back to the beginning of my timeline here. Let's get go where it fades in a little bit. Let's jump in the inspector, go to the video section. Now we've got keyframes for a whole ton of stuff here. Let's just start with uh, the transform section. I'm just going to hit the top level keyframe here. And now I can play through it back, watch it in real time and make any change I want here. And it's going to automatically add in the keyframe. Mind blown, right? I was like, what? I had no idea after all these years. So let's do a little zoom here. Guys, what is happening? It is cold here if you're anywhere in the United States. In New Jersey here, my... Okay, yeah, I mean, granted, you might not do it like this, you'd probably be more exact, but you're getting the idea here. Let's just move a couple other things here. Minus three degrees this morning, and I'm not talking like three degrees below freezing, which is 32. I'm talking minus three, dude. It is cold, and uh, I'm going to have to go back inside. Dude, I can't even be out here without gloves on. It is freezing, but I need some sample footage. So I just made a whole bunch of changes here in the inspector, and it keyframed all that stuff for me as I was making the changes in real time. So to see the changes that I made, I can come down in my timeline. Make sure your clip is zoomed up a little bit. If you hold your shift key and scroll your middle mouse wheel, you can uh, zoom it up and out. Make sure you can see these two little icons here. So if we click on the one on the right here, the diamond, that's going to show us all the keyframes that we just made in real time. And if you want to see them a little more specifically, like which, you know, is it zoom, position, whatever, click on this right here. Gonna make a little more room here. And now you can see there's keyframes for each one of the things that we changed. If I zoom in, you can see it just made keyframes it is cool for everything here, anywhere in the United as I was making the changes in real time. So you can come in, change them, delete them, whatever you want to do. You know which ones you used and where you made the keyframes. If you want a more detailed view, you could click on the little, uh, I'm going to call that a reverse S there. I don't know what it's actually called, curve, I guess. And then you'll get your curve graph down here where you can then select any one of the items that you keyframed. You can make changes, make it smoother, delete some, whatever you want to do. But super easy to kind of make automation changes to your video and add in those keyframes as you're playing back your video. I even tried it with some of the other things. Like if we wanted to, for example, do the composite mode, I'm going to hit a keyframe. I'm gonna oh, play guys, it back. What is happening? It is cold here if you're anywhere in the United States. In New Jersey here, minus three degrees this morning. And I'm not talking. And you could see it writing the keyframes as I'm playing back. So pretty much anything with keyframes here in the edit tab, you're gonna be able to do this really quick and easy. And it's gonna create them for you while you play back your video and you make adjustments on the fly. So is your mind blown as much as my mind was blown by that? I thought that was crazy. Literally, I learned that yesterday and I was like, how did I never know that? I never even thought to try that, right? So much awesome stuff here in Resolve. And that's why when I learn new things, I'm like, I gotta make a video about it, put it out there for you guys, cause it's something that you may not know too. But by the way, if you did know it, drop a comment down below, let me know. Cause uh, I'm curious if I'm the only one who didn't know that hack slash tip for keyframes. I don't know. But if you're brand new to keyframes, I do have a whole keyframe crash course that I just put out here on YouTube. It's free. You can head over, check that out. We talk about the edit page, the fusion page, the color page, fair light keyframes, all that kind of stuff. So this is kind of another uh, concept and way of working with keyframes that should have been tucked in there that uh, I just learned about. So, but uh, yeah, it's here now. And um, if you guys found it helpful, give me a little thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, with that said, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Peace.